I ain't forgot about y'all gang. Finally just came back to civilization to celebrate. Gonna make some dinner. Chunk chicken breast. Double up whole kernel corn. It should be good. Go ahead and roll the footage, show y'all what I've been up to. Sitting here at a, I took a little uh, break at a rest area real quick. Look at that snow, man. Wind blowing so hard, I can, I can feel it rocking the truck while I'm sitting here. But I'm about to keep on pushing though. I mean, the roads ain't really iced up too bad. You just got a, some some spots you got a lot of wind and snow. Some spots is clear. So when I whenever I get to the bad spot, I just uh I just slow it down. But I'm, I'm still pushing. I'm still pushing. 403 miles to my fuse solution. And that's probably where I'm gonna stay tonight, depending on uh, what time it is when I get there. I make it to this fuse solution. I only have about a little over 400 miles to my uh, to my destination for this drop. Check in later.
lumber mill. Should be a fun ride, people. Anybody want to know what a good torque job look like? There it go. Three torque job. All lumber. Thanks to my trainer. YouTube, I got two words for you. It ain't it ain't from degeneration. It ain't it ain't sucking. <laughs> I'm back. Hey, fit man. I got I got so I got so connected with my with my subscribers and putting my message out to y'all, man. My loyal subscribers that. You know, comment back and check on me and all this and that, man. It seems like forever since I've been gone, man. But, you know, man, since the last video I put up, I was headed to um, Washington to drop some, um, what was I dropping off? Some spools. Yeah, that's the last thing, I, last thing I uploaded. Man, it's been hectic, man. Drove through a blizzard. Man, the main thing about it, I ain't had no cell phone service. So that's really why you, nobody really heard from me. No cell phone service. And uh, matter of fact, I know y'all really can't see me right now, but all that, that 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 ain't part of the plan. I'm about to, I'm just doing a voiceover. So anyway, yeah, man, I headed up to Washington, man. I went up through Wyoming. Got the we got. I got one video that's gonna be up already. I got to Wyoming. Um, they was talking about closing down the highway. Next day, next morning, I woke up. I woke up by about 6:30. You know, uh, I think it's I think I think Wyoming might be on Central. No, nah, it might be on Mountain Time. So yeah, my my body clock was kind of off. So I woke up. It was like 6:30 when I woke up there. As soon as I woke up, bam, white world. <laughs> Night before, everything green. As soon as I woke up the next morning, everything white. I was like, man. Like, so I drove through. I, I had to get the loader, man. I couldn't sit there. There was some guys talking about waiting it out or whatever. And then some guys was like, man, just need to push through it. Why the snow not sticking to the road? Yeah, man. It was, I was talking to one guy. He was like, yeah, man, best thing to do, just push through it. Because it's, it's fresh right now. It ain't really iced up. So yeah, I'm just going. I'm just doing this little voiceover on on the footage, so you know, don't, don't stretch the video out too long. But yeah, man, I went about 300 miles through the snow. Roads really weren't too bad. I mean, at some points in time, it got where I really couldn't see anything because the snow was blowing so hard. I mean, but I just. I slowed it down. I mean, most of the time I was running at my top speed, 65. <clears throat> but when it got in areas where like it was like blowing so hard I couldn't see, I just slowed it down. Cut my blinkers on, slowed it down about 35, 40. Just kept pushing. I think after like maybe like three, four hours of, of it snowing, really, really getting out of Wyoming. Once I got out of Wyoming in the in the Utah, uh, it really wasn't snowing. It was already snow on the ground, but I mean it wasn't it wasn't that bad. So I got my load up there to Washington, dropped it off. I left Washington. This is where it got bad when I went to Idaho. I got off the interstate. I was on some back roads. Idaho, Idaho 3 and Idaho 6. If anybody ever been on those before. Now those those are the bad ones. Two lanes. Man, no, no, no guardrail. You know, just you and the side of the mountain. A lot of times, man. As you, you might can see it on the videos I got. I'm not sure how they're gonna line up with my voice, but some, sometimes on those roads, man. You, I mean, you gotta put your. I mean, cause there's no shoulder. It's just you and gravity, and <laughs> no shoulder, man. <clears throat> so a lot. Some sometimes I had to. I actually had to cut my blinkers on and ride both lanes. 
ride that center line. Cause I, I was, I was, I'm loaded at forty-eight thousand right now. As I make this video, I'm dropping it off in the morning, so I couldn't take no chances of me dropping my trailer tire off the side of that, uh, side of that road. Cause that would have been it for your boy. Yeah, I picked up some lumber up there, man. Up there in the deep country, like man, I'm talking about where the lumberjacks at, like log trucks, you know. Carrying the whole laws, you know, they, they flying up and down the mountain. You know, the guys drive the same routes every day. They flying up and down the mountain, blowing my damn doors off. I'm fucking creeping, scared I'm going to slip on some ice and go down the mountain. But, yeah, man, I got up there. Uh, took me took me about four hours to get loaded. Uh, could I didn't get no footage of that because, you know, I was trying to rush and hurry up and get it secured. And what happened with that was... And I'll never make this mistake again. I, I, while they was loading my lumber on my flatbed, I was throwing my straps while they was loading it. Guess what happened? Get to the damn front. You gotta weigh in when you go in. You gotta weigh in. On the way out, you gotta weigh out. Got to the front. 8,000 pounds over. So I had to turn around, go back down to the where they load at, they was already loading other trucks at that point in time, so I didn't have to wait for everybody, but I had to wait for them to finish the two trucks that they were working on, and everybody else that was in line, I skipped them, so. Main thing is, I had to take all the, I ain't, I ain't had to take all of them off, but I had to take off a good amount, because they they had like, it's, I got like three levels of lumber, and uh, one, two, and three, the ones, the, the third level is like towards the middle, so they had, to, they took it off the top, they took it off the top, and took that one off, dropped the weight down. So it was so from that point, it was probably about about six or seven straps on it, and from from what I had to take off. And and, that, and then you know they had the tarping station there. I mean, you could throw the straps over, but you can't. But you you got to climb up there on top and straighten them out because you know they falling in little cracks or whatever. You gotta you gotta get on top of that lumber to uh, straighten them out. But you can't do that until you get to the front and get to that uh, tarpon station. You got to put the little uh, harness on and go up there. So, yeah, by the time I finished that, and there was another guy tarping beside me, and we were talking, and uh, I was asking him about the area, if he ever been up there before, and he was like, yeah. And uh, we, I was asking about the, where the truck stops was at. And he was like, oh, ain't no truck stops around here, man. He was like, it's a weight station like 50 miles from here. He was like, that's where I'm going to stay tonight. And I was like, all right. So I was like, yeah, I'll I go there too. But by the time I got finished, man, it's probably like 6.30. Running off recaps. I only got, um, I only had two hours coming back the next day. I had like five hours left from that day. So what I said, I'm just going to, because I've already been off duty for like four hours. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna sleep right here at this at the shipper because they had overnight parking, and I'm gonna save those five hours to add with my two hours for tomorrow. And that seven hours that'll get me out of these mountains back to the interstate. So that's what I did. And I asked the guy, I was like, how how, how bad is the road leading up to the weight station? He was like, man, it, it ain't that bad, man. Bullshit. When I when I drove that route the next day. And I seen the rose, and then I finally made it to that point where that weight station was at that he said, man, that shit was hectic. I actually pulled over at the weight station and uh, did my load check. Hey, right, let me tell y'all, man, about these load checks. When they tell you to do the first load check within 50 miles of, um, of leaving the shipper, make sure you do it within 50 miles. Because when I pulled over and did my load check right there at that weight station, I went back there and uh, tightened up all my straps. Man, they had to, that by the time I got them 50 miles, that that wood had settled down, and those those straps were so loose that I, uh, I mean, I could have just I could put my whole arm behind them and, and pull them out. They had got that loose within those 50 miles. So yeah, man, make sure y'all do those load checks, especially that initial load check within 50 miles, because um, by the time you go 50 miles, you know everything settles in. And you have a lot of loose play in those straps, or chains, or whatever you got. So make sure y'all do that. So anyway, I got off of Idaho six. No, nah, it was it was one. It was one way or the other. Idaho six, Idaho three. I think I got off six and got on three. 
that one's just as bad. So I take three all the way up to I-90. Get on I-90. I-90 takes you into Montana. Now I was in Idaho. It hadn't been snowing. It was snowing the ground, but it hadn't been snowing. As soon as I got on I-90 and started started driving, didn't know where I was at until I seen the sign that said, Welcome to Utah. Uh, welcome, welcome to Montana. As soon as I got to the top of the mountain, it's like, cause you got a, you got a little climb to get up there. As soon as I get to the top, it's like fucking snow out of nowhere. Like, whew, blizzard again at the top of the mountain. I'm like, what in the fuck? So here I am. And, and then and then it's so bad, only one lane is clear. Like the other, like two, it's two lane road with four lane, two on each side, but only that that right that right lane was the only one clear. The other lane had so much snow and ice in it, everybody was just riding the right lane. But actually, <coughs> hey, I, I ninety even though it's interstate, it got it got cliffs on the two, no shoulder cliffs and all, and, and it's an interstate. So yeah, I got up out of there. I drove about maybe about a hundred miles. Once I drove about a hundred miles, it started to clear up. And I actually spent the night at a um, at a Petro up there in Montana. Next morning I got up. I don't know where I went that morning. That was Friday when I woke up. I forgot. I forgot where I went. Went somewhere. I, I don't forget. Today is Sunday now. I know last night I was at the uh, Loves and the, and I find and I found that Walmart truck stop. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and roll that footage right now. Let me show y'all feeling something. I just ha I just happened to run across it by chance. Exit 59, I-80, Nebraska. Y'all see y'all see what's over there? Y'all see that? Walmart truck stop. I'm in the dirt parking lot right here. I'm way at the back. Cause I'm heading right back out going to Lowe's, right down the street. But check this, y'all see that? The Walmart truck stop. Exit 59, if, if, I, if I'm saying it correctly, in Nebraska. Thank me later. So yeah, I got everything I needed from the Walmart truck stop. Made me a little meal tonight inside the truck. Good thing I got some food. I didn't have any food. I ate all my food before I went home for Christmas. Cause um, yeah, right now I'm out here in Pella, Iowa, at a little a little country. It's a little truck stop. I wouldn't even consider the trucks though. I could just it's just like a country store, but it just got a a big dirt parking lot in the back. And it's probably it's one mountain truck here. A couple trucks over from me. He was here when I got here. It's probably about eight trucks out here. Now, the truck beside me. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but he's running his engine. I don't know if you can hear it in the background. Uh, I'm trying not to run my engine. I didn't run it last night. I was in Nebraska last night. I didn't run it last night. I'm not gonna run it tonight until it, until it gets to that point where it gets too cold and I have to cut it on. Cause up in there, up in, I was up, up north from Wyoming all the way up to Washington. It was it was just too cold, man. It's like five degrees, two degrees, negative eight degrees. I mean, so I had to I had to out on my engine. Like I was looking at my idle time on the Qualcomm the other day. It actually told me the engine had been idling for. It can't it couldn't have been right because I had to cut it off to put fuel in it. But it said four days, but um, my fuel mileage is just shot, so I'm trying to get that back. Cause I mean I've had no choice but the idle man. It's been fucking freezing. So yeah, I'm up here in Pella, Iowa now. As soon as I finish smoking this cigarette, y'all can't see me smoking it cause I'm doing a voiceover. But anyway, another thing I learned on this trip, all my Newport smokers. When you, when you go to different states, Newports is high. Like $9, $12, they're high. One thing I learned when I was in uh, Wyoming, they actually, the truck stop I was at actually didn't have any Newports, so that's how I ended up trying Marlboros. Marlboro Menthols, 100s. They're like, 
I, I got two packs for ten dollars. Put it like that. And, and one pack of Newports is like eight dollars. I got two packs of Marlboro Menthols for ten dollars. So I've been smoking Marlboro Menthols. And what I do, what I do now, you know, when you're driving, I mean, I don't need to be smoking, but when you're driving, man, your nerves get bad, you just want to smoke a cigarette. So that's when I smoke, I pull one of the Marlboros out, I smoke them. Yeah, you don't know the difference, as long as you fucking get in the damn nicotine. It ain't too big of a deal. I need to quit, like I said. It's coming one day, but right now, my nerves is bad. Yeah, man. I'm going to get this voiceover added on top of the footage I already got. And we're going to go from there. So, I'll be in touch with y'all. Congratulations to House of Power on your new employment opportunity. Shout out all my new subscribers. Thank you for tuning in with your boy. Uh... Anybody else, man? Hey, I like I like answering y'all questions. Uh, all the guys that y'all y'all answer my questions. So if I got the, if I got the chance to answer y'all questions, I'm gonna answer them. As long as I got time. If you don't hear from me, it's cause I'm fucking I'm busy working, busy working my ass off, or I'm driving in a dangerous situation and I ain't got time to respond. Cause some some nights I'm beat. Some nights, as soon as I pull up in a truck stop, hit that sleeper berth. Take a shower if I'm able. A lot of, a lot of times, I'm, my ass is gone. Out like a light. What I'm about to do right now, because I'm tired. Thanks for tuning in, people. Till next time. Anybody else watching this video that ain't already subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Drop a like, comment, introduce yourself. Flatbed gang, baby. I'm out.